Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving a quick and easy equation with complex numbers. I call this quick and easy because it's not too complicated. Hopefully you'll find it the same way. Let me know what you think about the level of this problem. This kind of looks like a basic level, but again, I could be wrong. I categorize problems and try to put them into different buckets or playlists, as you call it, right, on YouTube. And um, I also made a playlist for a series of lecture videos that I made. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check them out uh, on my channel, okay? Which is A plus BI, by the way, if, in case you didn't know, this channel is called A plus BI because Z equals A plus BI is a complex number. And we use that a lot. By the way, I have another channel, which is Cyber Math. You can also check it out in case you didn't know. A lot of people who watch uh, this channel also knows that. But anyways, I also post videos on a daily basis on that channel. So how do you solve an equation like this? Okay, if you have complex numbers in the denominator, you try to get rid of them, make them real by multiplying by conjugates. But if you have z at the bottom, what do you do? Do you multiply by z bar? We don't even know what z bar is. I mean, we could kind of guess or maybe make up something. So this is where the name of the channel comes in, like z equals a plus bi, right? Okay, you can do that. And then after that, eventually, you're going to end up multiplying by a plus bi and it's conjugate anyways, right? So let's go ahead and plug it in. a plus bi divided by 1 plus i plus 1 minus i divided by a plus bi. Notice that these two expressions are not reciprocals. They're different. I did that on purpose, so that would be more, more interesting. But the result was interesting. I, I was kind of surprised at the results. I don't know. Like, I wasn't expecting these results. Anyways, you'll see in a little bit. So I can make a common denominator. That's one way to approach it. That's definitely not wrong. Because uh, if you realize, I multiply this by itself to make a common denominator, and I multiply these two things, that gives me 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2, by the way. And then these two will be multiplied, and then eventually uh, they'll be multiplied by what's on the right-hand side. So they'll be conjugating nicely again. That's going to be a 2. So this is not super bad, right? I mean, think about it. You don't have to use conjugates. Uh, this works out fine. And then here we get a 2. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, one thing that I notice as soon as I wrote this is putting this a plus bi on the left, right? And then calling it back, calling it z again, right? That's kind of funny, isn't it? We replace z with a plus bi. Now we're replacing a plus bi with z because they are interchangeable. By the way, I was not expecting this, but that's okay. It just came up um, all of a sudden and I think this is a good opportunity to talk about some interesting things. This is a quadratic equation which has no real solutions. Are you surprised? Okay. Now, how do you solve it though? With the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 2, which is 8. That's going to give us the negative uh, square root of negative 4, which is 2i plus minus. So it's going to be 2 plus minus 2i divided by 2. Were you expecting this? I wasn't. z equals 1 plus minus i. Uh-oh, those numbers were in our equation, weren't they? So if you think about it, I mean, if z is equal to 1 plus i, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If you think about it, let me write the original problem. I was setting it up, but I really haven't thought about that, it that way at least. If z is a 1 plus i, you're going to get a 1 from here. And 1 plus i is going to give you something else here which I believe is negative i, and I put these together, you're going to get 1 minus i. If z is equal to 1 minus i, then you're going to get a 1 here, and I think this is going to give you a negative i again, because that's what it is. It's the same thing, by the way, and you'll get those solutions. Make sense? So that kind of makes sense after the fact. I realized, yes, this makes sense. Okay, cool. Now let's see. Um, we found it without finding a and b actually separately, but if you really just completed the process here, like, let's go ahead and take a look. Because that's going to be a, the variation of the problem, you know, like a variation of the solution. So if you went ahead and just um, maybe even erase this too, because that's the substitution level. All right, so let's go ahead and expand it. a squared minus b squared plus 2abi plus 2 equals 2a plus 2bi. If you put the real parts together, this real part is going to equal this real part. 
and imaginary parts 2ab will be 2b or not 2b. Yay, I was able to say that. And from here, obviously, you can factor out a 2b and a minus 1 equals 0. This gives you two things, either a is equal to 1 or b is equal to 0. And you can test both out, uh, and you kind of need to plug them into uh, the first equation, which is this one. If a is equal to 1, then I'm getting 1 minus b squared plus 2 is equal to 2. 2 cancels out, and b squared equals 1 gives you b equals plus minus 1. Along with this, you get 1 plus minus i. Same solutions, right? Good. What about b equals 0? If b is equal to 0, then in the first equation, you're going to get a squared plus 2 equals 2a. But unfortunately, let me write it down here. Or fortunately, I don't know. Uh, you're not going to get any real solutions. Uh-oh. Well, isn't this channel all about complex numbers? So complex num solutions are fine? No, not for A. Because A and B, by definition, are real numbers. If you remember, or if you look it up, or check the lecture videos, check, it check them out, Z equals A plus B, I is a complex number. If A and B are real numbers, and I is one of the square roots of negative 1. What do I mean by that? I mean i squared equals negative 1 because negative 1 has two square roots. But the principal square root is probably i. Okay? Make sense? Cool, cool. If we're good with the first method or just a general jumbo mumbo, I guess we could just proceed with the second approach. Okay? I call it jumbo mumbo because it's kind of a mixture of different things. Uh, they weren't very organized, I guess. But anyways, let's clear this area because I'm too lazy. Uh, and I just watched the video from a guy, a professor at Oxford. He says, a good mathematician is lazy. I'm not claiming I'm a good mathematician, but uh, I just want to be lazy, okay? <laughs> cool. So now, let's go ahead and, I guess, directly make a common denominator here. Multiply by z, multiply by 1 plus i. That's going to give us z squared plus 2 and divide it by z times 1 plus i equals 1 minus i. And then this gives us z squared plus i. 2 equals z times that, and that's going to be 2z or not 2z. And then we get the following quadratic equation. I was expecting to get something nice. I mean, not nice, but something not nice, actually. So I was hoping to get something like z squared with some i's in the coefficients and so on and so forth, and ended up, like, when we end up solving it, it should give us something like 1 plus i or something. I didn't know the solutions were two, 1 plus i and 1 minus i to start with, so... Uh, I was hoping that this will get somewhere nice, but during the first methods, I kind of realized, oh, okay, this turns into something nice for certain reasons. Anyways, I don't know if uh, I confused you enough. <laughs> Anyways, I'll stop here because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.